So welcome everyone. Um, morning. So, so uh, last session we talked a bit about um, Google Cloud Computing in particular, and um, I talked a bit about the uh, how you can set up VMs in Google Cloud, which is um, of course very sensible if you want to use this, for example, for your assignment and so on. What I hadn't shown you though, and I just want to do this very briefly, is um, how to um, also use use storage um in in um, google cloud and um you know so how, how you can actually use cloud storage as well because we always talk about uh, processing storage and networking as the three key ingredients for cloud computing uh, i guess and it's only fair uh, given that i have shown you some elements of networking i showed you some load balancing we haven't talked about other advanced services such as you know content delivery networks uh, or um the, um the kind of um, virtual networks uh, configuration and so on um but nevertheless um, i think it was something that could be quite relevant to you also for your projects could be cloud storage if you want to have uh, some resources um quickly and um yeah quickly accessible so following that um so i just want to wrap this up because there was on my agenda for last session um and uh, following this i want to look at testing uh, in particular because one of the challenges that you guys faced was to or questions that you guys probably had was how to test effectively um http services in particular or cloud services more immediately so i wanted to talk to uh about those um, issues as well as part of this <clears throat> so but before i get to the um um I'll just bring up the cloud service uh, already <laughs> but um in reflection of that let's see it's coming up yeah it looks good in reflection of this uh, one aspect i need to highlight um i um was asked last session or uh, last session someone commented that my uh, video was not really available from last week um so and that was the one that where i provided you hopefully with an overview of google cloud computing in particular or cloud platform rather uh, as it's named um and it turns out for some reason this video is constantly um kind of blocked whenever I upload it um i i think or well, my suspicion is that i probably showed too much sort of um, copyrighted content or proprietary information I, I i can't really pin it down and there's no further information that i got is in response to this but it seems to be blocked every time i even attempt to upload it so uh, unfortunately the my walk through if you like um through google cloud perform is not therefore available in in a video form so it's a bit of a pity um but uh it, it just doesn't um allow its operation but um you you hopefully recall from the my my um, um discussion and if you were present in particular um that the, the key ingredients that i looked at were um the computing area storage area to some extent we really look at this a bit more um databases as an as as a direction you know already one instance of those anyhow anyway and then there was uh, the huge uh, thing of networking that we really didn't talk about to be honest but if you look at networking and you want to explore a bit more there are two uh, points that are relevant one of them is the VP, uh, vpc networks um which is more like the general configuration of networking uh, as it's visible from the outside such as defining external ip addresses uh, firewalls routing and so on but i think the firewall is particularly interesting and from a perspective of network services you will find things like uh, load balancing i talked about it last time briefly meaning the linkage of two uh, nodes behind a, a shared load balancer which kind of is then the um, front facing so internet facing that is and anyone connecting to it is, is redirected to either one of those instances in this pool right so that's one of the concepts that sits behind it um they are both shut down right now and they obviously um um the, the load balancer picks up on this which is kind of cool because uh there, thereby it can automatically detect which instances it can respond to or not respond to signaling robustness of the system right then there's uh dns uh the um, domain name system so where you can actually define and manage domains yourself assigning for example uh, subdomains to particular uh, hosts and so on and um of course registering <laughs> that's always a nice um um additional service for those uh, cloud providers registering your own domains as well so that would be one option as well so you can register your own domain and manage it via google cloud computing mind you you kind of of course need then also to commit to this as a platform at least uh, you know um, uh, at least before you migrate okay um 
so but storage um so databases is also of course a form of storage uh, but uh, you know um, the idea is generally associated with um, structured storage and this here is file storage effectively that's um, provided and one of the features um, that is um, quite uh, relevant let's go to the file store in particular is the question or ability to kind of um, store um, uh, quick file content um, uh, yeah, right that, is, that establishes whole file servers so let's confuse those two ones Um, and the idea is basically, you know, how can we manage um, storage only, right? So um, the idea is always about, um, um, of course, if you have a VM, you have implied networking elements, you have implied uh, computing elements, and you have implied, implied storage elements. But uh, what, uh, what, what you haven't seen yet is how this can be separated, right? I showed you a bit of cloud functions, for example, as a concept. We can revisit this uh, again if there's demand. Um, uh, it, it kind of to show uh, how you know we can isolate functionality into uh, simple um, services that are um, uniquely accessible right on one hand but uh, we haven't done the same for storage yet so i just want to motivate the idea how storage management uh, works on those platforms and the idea is um, in, in the trivial form um, to have a notion of buckets so you define a bucket globally unique bucket um, you know so that needs to be um, I don't know, should it work? Should it work right? Ah, yeah, good, works. So we give it a unique bucket, it needs to be global unique. The system will, of course, tell you. Uh, and then it has kind of a similar pattern of, um, of, of creation as you found for um, the compute um, engine um, instantiation as well, the VMB instantiation. And that is, it asks about the nature of the bucket, right? So is it uh, um, completely localized, meaning it only applies to one particular region, right? Um, or as to whether it kind of has dual or multi-region where it actually applies to other um, regions outside of this for the Netherlands that is the last time. Um, and um, this is, of course has various um, uh, motivations on the one hand it's about um, redundancy but also about low latency. So the, the idea is that for example in a single region variant you can ensure of course that you have low latency for this particular region but not really beyond it. You can serve of course customers beyond it but uh, you will you will have of course performance lags necessarily. Whereas in a for example dual region you have kind of a um, the, the best of both worlds, uh, I don't know, yeah, well, a compromise in a way, but what it, what it basically focuses on is availability. So you have adjacent reasons generally, regions generally, that you can choose from. You see this here, for example, Europe, Netherlands and Finland, or in US it would be Iowa and South Carolina or Tokyo and Osaka, if you were to be in the uh, Asia Pacific region. And uh, it ensures that there is, um, a, you know, a, a redundancy basically of your entire infrastructure um, across those different regions. And multi regions are, of course, that you can really uh, rather pick by area, vast area, and kind of it will um, consider, um, yeah, pretty much all those uh, regions within a particular area, such as being the um, EU and so on. So the idea is there, of course, to have high redundancy, but also low latency. It's all ex it's expressed in the price in the end, right? So that's the main point. So if you uh, go cheaper, it will be uh, lower, it will be cheaper. You can see it all already as well. So um, here, for example, storage retriever. So I can just put in, let's say I want to have two gigabyte of storage. Let's see if it's um, calculate anyway. Anyway, so it's uh, 0 0.02 um, US dollar per gigabyte per month. So if I switch to multi-region arrangements, we see already a 0 0.2, um, you know, 0.026 um, US dollar per, per gigabyte in the monthly cost is still considerably low for two gigabyte, that's, if that's correct. So that's quite, quite neat. Let's see if the availability changes. Right, so it increases av availability. A, um, a bit here. So we have 99.95% uh, availability. We get back to availability calculations uh, soon. Um, but this one, for example, is only 99.9 if you liked. And the monthly cost of 4 cents then accumulated. So it's reasonably cheap, the whole idea. Um, so, but nevertheless, it's quite relevant and important from your, from your configuration, from the um, 
perspective. It really depends on what your ob objective is. And then the second part, uh, in addition to picking the region that you want to serve in the first place, oh. the other aspect is to think about the um, kind of data uh, themselves. So what's the kind of uh, data you're dealing with? Are you, um, um, is it data you frequently access and have uh, need to have at your, you know, uh, quickly available, so that would be a standard storage, but then there's also incrementally slower storages, generally larger and slower storages, um, and therefore cheaper storages. Um, so if you, I can show you pricing again uh, later, um, that, that allows you, for example, to um, store large amounts of data, you know, like, like um, archives um, of, of different kinds or backups and so on, that you can actually keep in the long haul, but actually don't need to access S immediately at all, at least not with a low latency. So, um, and this can be um, quite quite interesting for, uh, you know, varying forms of storage that you, you may have. So again, here we have the 0 0.02 uh, dollar per month for standard, for example, the near line goes, goes down to 0 0.01. Um, but suddenly you'll see that, interestingly, uh, that data retrieval is free for the standard variant because the assumption is that you have, you know, uh, random access and frequently so. Uh, now retrieval actually costs you money, 0 0.01. So here the idea, the incentive is really to keep store it and keep it stored, but don't really access it. So you see how the, the storage, uh, the price for storage goes down massively. Code line, for example, 004 uh, US dollar per gigabyte month, but the retrieval <laughs> is disproportionately expensive. Or the archiving version was even uh, even even cheaper, but then retrieval is even more more expensive. So, it's um, it's kind of a really interesting concept. The the idea of how um, um, Google and of course others equivalently can kind of organize the data according to your uh, need and the accessibility. So it's something you probably wouldn't be able to uh, you know um, have as clearly defined, for example, if you ran your own. Um, IIS environment in particular, but also, of course, it boils down to the storage uh, choices that they make, right? So if you uh, have free and access data, you likely end up on some sort of uh, um, um, SSD environment um, in terms of hardware, whereas it will be inc incrementally slower, but also probably more remote when it comes to those um, other forms. Anyway, standard is probably the one you want to go for because you don't want to pay for data retrieval. That would be very annoying. And then uh, other aspects include, for example, the granularity of control. So if you have, um, um, well, think about a, a folder and you have various items in there or um, files, if you like, you have on the one hand the choice to kind of uh, define access or um, uh, yeah, access uh, on an individual fine grained level or uniformly. So we just stick to uniformly for sake of simplicity. And then again, there's this um, encryption question again. Um, I mentioned this in the context of the EMS last time. Um, that also um, Google, of course, stores the EMs in encrypted form. The question is, however, who manages the key, right? Is it Google itself, meaning they can also de-encrypt it, but not third parties that possibly uh, get hold of your VMs or buckets or whatever it would be, but nevertheless, Google can. So if there could be uh, um, um, the governmental intervention of some sort, potentially making your data accessible. Anyway, I forgo this for now, but uh, fundamentally, those are the key ideas. So now it creates this bucket uh called proc 2005 cloud Let's see and what do you get well you will be surprised i guess um it's actually quite straightforward so uh you get this bucket here effectively and uh, uh and that's what it yeah effectively is um already in in the first place so what you can configure it further you can refine certain characteristics some of them not um you can change um, for example permission sets uh Oh, now I created it somewhere in the US. Anywho, it doesn't matter. Um, and uh, manage, of course, um, the permission set, the retention policy that, um, you know, that way you can automatically, for example, delete items if you only need them, for example, for import into a database, but you don't care about keeping those files, then the retention policy can deal with this um, for this, uh, uh, deal with this for you. So. Right, and then you get the, the the link URL as well. So here's the main point, similar to the um, um, cloud VMs, or rather, yeah, the the the, the uh, internet facing uh, or network facing um, elements of the internet VMs. You of course get your URL or in in this particular instance, and it will tell you, uh, hang on, there's something wrong here. First of all, you need to log in in order to see something, and second of all, likely they would tell you there's not not anything there really. Let me just check the chat. So, yeah, um, okay, 
so okay so the um so what do we need well we now have a bucket and there are various other ones there are, um, mind you um, recall that Google Cloud Computing, as uh, most other IIS providers, actually use that infrastructure for their own services, right? So some of them actually automatically generated or created as part of uh, for, for for their own service provision. So when I start, for example, an app in in uh, Google App Engine, um, then it also creates an associated bucket. Basically, that's where all the data re relates to the app is stored, right? So there is an element of integration across those different services, which is sometimes not super obvious. And you don't need to terribly worry about, but just be aware, even if you look at the cloud storage on your part, you'll likely find already that there may be some buckets existing. However, they sit alongside your own one that you're likely managing. So, uh, but go back to our, let's go back to our little bucket here. And uh, just to motivate uh, how, how that possibly um, works, I will um, try to add a file. Possibly. So um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Here is this one. So let's add this file, for example, just to have some item in there. And you can of course can do this quite flexibly with any with any sort of um, content, right? So it can also be folders, can be contained and so on. You can create folders and organize things in there. But then you have, for example, elements uh, in there. Um, just, so, and the, the, of course, the aspects that need to be managed is, hang on, I'm in my own way here. Let's put my this thing to the left. Um, you can, of course, then access it. You have all the information about related to this particular item. But most important, you want to check about the um, um, the permissions. So let's see what uniform buckets permission and then want to add permission. So you see that it's rather constraining here right now. So it inherits a lot of permissions in the first place from the from top level project. But if you, for example, interested to allow um, general access, check viewer, um, that sounds a bit more complicated than I wanted it to be. So for that, ah, there you go. I want to model public access, of course. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense to us. Um, so let's see buckets. All users stay. Oh, okay. And they can. Um, cloud storage can. Uh, they're not an admin, of course, but an object viewer. And they can have. Let's see a little bit further. Yes, so that's what I wanted. So it basically says everyone, all users, is a predefined role that allows. Um, so it, it, it includes people that are not authenticated in the system. So you could also constrain, let's say, to authenticated users. You basically say, make all resources public. That's what I want to do in this particular instance. And you also get a signal that this is actually the case um, because it basically gives public access to the entire bucket. And you can also manage and remove this. Um, so, but. So there's one way for for you basically to expose data and expose them uh, quickly. I mean, if you think about single files, that's not like uh, you know um, the the especially a small, not not the possibly best use case. But if you think about uh, fast access to uh, data sets or anything faster or um, pictures and so on, so you now should be able to see what else but cats, of course. But nevertheless, um, anyway, that's the only main main purpose of the internet, as we know. So the, the, the idea is basically you have this facility that is only focused on storage. 
And um, the idea is that you access it by UL and can do fine grade management with respect to authentication, uh, delivery, complexity. You can have folders in there, subfolders. Think about your file system exposed more or less to the internet for good and for bad, of course. And you don't also need to make the access public. Uh, remember, so this whole permission management is really about sharing data amongst uh, individuals and as far as relevant uh, or make partial information public. In the beginning, for example, uh, there was this choice when I created the bucket. It was the question as to whether I want to manage ACL, so access control lists on individual item levels. So, you know, per element, literally per file or per folder or, or uh, per bucket, right? So global. And that's something I picked uh, in earlier. So I also needed to configure the permission set globally that's the main main point so anything in there will have the same at least initially the same a kind of permission unless i decide to switch to a more fine-grained model for this purpose anyway that's literally all i wanted to show you just to give you a sense of um, what the buckets are uh, and how that works and how storage works how it looks like in the end it's always the same you get an endpoint uh, or URL rather directly to a file that you can use embed in your you know website or in any sort of other service you want to you want to draw on and you can see already how functionality for example um, uh, developed on on uh, in the VM can actually for example draw on files that are hosted in the buckets correspondingly and so on right so you can decompose your services um, as well quite fine granularly so um yeah anyway so that's one one of the features i wanted to show you as well so that you have a bit of a sense of what other iis features we commonly have because you had seen already earlier um how we uh, create vm instances in the first place um in um in openstack so uh, you knew that part already okay any questions regarding this One comment while you're typing in AWS, uh, so Amazon Web Services, uh, the corresponding service is called S3. They call this S3. Um, so exactly the same concept. They have um, the concept of buckets as well, uh, in which you can store files basically and define the accessibility uh, quite fine-grained as well, uh, in, including protocols, I believe, as well, that they make ex um, allow um, by you know uh, by which they make the files accessible so um, it's all kind of really equivalent um, in one of the later sessions once we got through the problem will be more essential um, parts of the material that you need for you know for for for, for assignment or slash project rather um, then I may just browse through um, AWS as well and show you how it correspondingly looked looks on that side but if there are no questions I uh, leave it at this for now um, Okay, so right, so that was basically the, uh, the main Google um, computing site, so people get some sense that um, how that possibly works. The questions that came up um, beyond this, so let's see. 